The question that I keep getting over and over again this year is what's going to happen with our housing market? We are in such an odd time and things are so specifically weird right now. For that reason, I'm trying to do more market updates and prediction videos so we can gather information and try to prepare ourselves for whatever might come in the future with our housing market here in Austin. I did a couple other videos where I did a prediction of what I think is gonna happen with the summer's housing market. I also shared a market update for the spring housing market to see what had happened in order to try to see what could potentially happen this year. There's a lot of things at play right now that are specific to just 2024. One, we're in Texas and it's really hot. <laughs> Two, interest rates are still high all over the country. Yes, they've come down a smidge, but in all honesty, it's not really enough to make much of a difference for home buyers. And lastly, we are in an election year. Election years are always weird. The market kind of stands still after July and homes just sit on the market as home buyers wait to see what the government is gonna do and what direction the country is gonna go in. This year, of course, is no exception. We've got so many different things at play that really haven't been at play before. The last four-ish years in real estate, in Austin anyway, have been absolutely wild. It has been a roller coaster ride. And now we're starting to kind of settle a bit and things are slowing down, which actually does provide more opportunity for home buyers. But then again, you've got the high interest rates, etc. So I think it's important to keep doing these market update videos so you can see what's going on and we can take a real look at numbers. Hey guys, I'm Daphne Quay, your boss lady realtor here in Austin, Texas. And if you're thinking about buying or selling a home in the Austin area, Area, you can contact me. My contact information is in the description below. You can also set up a direct video call with me. Just follow the link in the description below. And if you are watching my videos from any other part of the US and you're needing to buy or sell a home in another state, contact me. I can get you linked up with a wonderful realtor in your area. I have realtor partners all over the country that are ready, willing, and able to help. So with that, Let's dive in. Realtors in the Austin area are part of the Austin Board of Realtors. The Austin Board of Realtors releases a market update, basically infographic every month of different market areas in Central Texas. There's Austin proper, there's surrounding suburbs like Round Rock, San Marcos, Pflugerville, of course, Austin and Travis County. Then you've got the Northern suburbs in Williamson County, Hayes County, Bastrop County, etc. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the infographic for the numbers and sales volumes, etc. for the month of June in 20. 2024. So with that, let's take a look at the info and the numbers right now. And I want to hear from you guys. Leave a comment with your predictions of what you think is going to happen with our housing market before the election. Keep it respectful in the comments. I love interacting with you guys and it's really cool to hear what you guys are seeing and what you guys are thinking. So let's go. Let's take a look here at this first quadrant where it talks about the median sales price. Now, keep in mind, this is for June 2024 market snapshot of Travis County. So that's Austin proper. The median sales price was $525,000, which is down 3.7% from June of 2023. 3.5% or 3.7%, whatever you wanna call it, obviously is a decrease, but that's not that significant. The next number that I'm gonna tell you about is a pretty significant jump down. So let's take a look at the closed sales. Total number of homes closed in June of 2024 was 1,210, almost 20%, which kind of makes me wonder, let's say there were 10 homes sitting on the market today. I wonder if that would translate to 20% of those homes not selling. So like two of them wouldn't ever sell. I'm curious. And I don't, I don't think those numbers are like directly correlated. So don't come at me at the comments if not, but it's just me thinking out loud. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. An even bigger decrease is the sales dollar volume. In June of 2024 in Travis County, there were $842 million worth of real estate transactions closed, which is an impressive number. However, that is down almost 22% from the year prior in 2023. These two quadrants of closed sales and sales dollar volume, that is directly correlated. So I think it's to be expected that they be within the same range or so. In this next section here, we can see the months of inventory. It's saying in June, we had 5.8 months worth of inventory left. We'll call it six months. So basically what that means, if there were to be absolutely no new homes to hit the market for sale for 5.8 months, it would take exactly that amount of time to be completely sold 
out. 5.8 months, that's almost six months. That's half a year, that's a lot. And then there's a small graphic right above that 5.8 mark showing that it went up 1.8 months worth of inventory. That's saying that we were in a slightly stronger seller's market in June of 2023 because there were about four months of inventory instead of nearly six. This influx of inventory along with high interest rates is obviously why homes are sitting on the market. I think we should jump right down to the active listings in June of 2024. 6,819, which is up almost 30% from the year prior. That's massive. That's a really big jump because in all of 2021 and early 2022, we had almost no inventory available to us in Travis County or just in central Texas in general. I remember there were multiple times in the morning where I would look on the MLS multiple listing service where all the listings live to see how many homes there were on the market. And there were several occasions where in all of central Texas or like the greater Austin Metro, if you will, only had 2000 homes for sale which is absolutely nothing, which is why every home ended up selling for 100,000 or sometimes 200,000 above the asking price. And then we jump down here to average days on market. It is showing 60 days, which sounds about right. Of course, there's exceptions in either direction. I've seen homes that are priced really well in great neighborhoods with great presentation that are priced below market and those will sell in a week or less. And then on the opposite side of the spectrum, you have homes that are so, so maintained, price too high and the neighborhood is kind of out in the middle of nowhere where nobody wants to live and those homes are literally set on the market for six seven sometimes even eight months i was looking at homes with a client a few weeks ago and there was one home that had been on the market literally for a year and a half the home was actually great and it was priced all right but it was just in an area that was so far removed from everything that it was hard to justify living there they were a family and they wanted to be close to things to do to give you an example. So this 60 days feels right as an average. Something that I think is interesting is that it shows that it's only up six days from June of 23. I feel like last summer I was seeing a lot of the same thing though. Homes would just sit on the market for a long time, unless the presentation of course was absolutely stellar. All right, let's jump down to this last portion here, average close to list price. I think this is kind of like the golden nugget of a question. A lot of home buyers that I work with ask what their negotiation power is in this market because we're very much in a buyer's market. And they'll ask me like, well, if a house is priced at this much and it's been on the market this long, how much can I expect to get off of it? And this basically answers our question. It's saying average close to list price is is 97.2% compared to June of 2023, last year, where it was at 94.9%, we'll call it 95% of the asking price. The reason I think it's a little bit higher this year, average close to list price, because prices have come down pretty significantly from last year. There's some neighborhoods where I was showing homes early 2023, where you could get a 2,500, 3,000 square foot home for around 750, like kind of in the suburbs. Today, that same home is gonna be closer to like 690, maybe 700. That's a pretty significant jump down. And none of this is really <laughs> backed up by facts or research, you guys. This is just what I'm seeing, kind of what my feeling is on it. And another portion that I wonder is because we are in such a strong buyer's market, a lot of times when I'm representing a buyer, we'll ask for the seller to cover closing costs. Sometimes it's all of it, sometimes it's a portion of it, but we always try to ask for as much as possible. Now, I say that because when we're asking for all these closing costs to be covered, a lot of times a seller becomes less willing to negotiate a ton on price. Sellers do understand generally that they need to negotiate on price. So if they're, but if they're making a ton of concessions where the buyer has to come to closing with as little money as possible, they're just a lot less willing to give in on price. This doesn't mean they won't negotiate at all. I recently helped a client buy a beautiful home in Round Rock that sits on half an acre and it had a pool. We got $25,000 off the sales price and then we ended up getting an extra $17,000 towards closing costs as well. That's a pretty significant decrease in price and that is a hefty, hefty seller contribution towards closing costs. So then my client just came to their closing with their down payment. To give an example. If you guys are finding these market updates to be helpful, please leave a comment and let me know. I really enjoy doing them and I think it's really interesting to see what happens from month to month and then from year to year. I also really appreciate the fact that the Austin Board of Realtors offers these infographics for us to see. These are all public information and I have them from years and years ago. So sometimes when a board and have nothing to do, which is very rare, I will go on the ABOR website and see how far back I can see to where like the home average price was like $280,000 and that would take us back to like 2014, so a while ago. 
Uh, but if you're finding these videos helpful, do leave a comment, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can be notified every time I do videos like this one. If you guys are thinking about buying or selling a home in the Austin area, please make sure to reach out. Also, if you see me out and about, come say hi. I love interacting with you guys out in the wild in the real world. And if you're thinking about buying or selling a home in another state and you need help there, contact me. I have realtor partners all over the US that are ready, willing, and able to help. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'm Daphne Quay, your boss lady realtor. Till next time.